So now in this video, I thought we would use a passive buzzer. And to do so, I'm going to use the 555 timer because you have to give the passive buzzer signals. You don't just apply it to a DC supply like the active buzzer. And fortunately, the 555 timer did not power it very well itself. As you can see, it has bursts of uh, high current. And uh, I even have current limited from the power supply. And so we're doing okay right now, though. But in uh, any case, I had to use a transistor to amplify it. But the main thing is, I'll turn this. There's a light dependent resistor. Depending on how it's facing the light, the uh, buzzer goes faster or slower. We'll expose it to the light. Uh, this is just an alligator clip cover. You can hear it's going faster and even faster. So if we used a lower value capacitor, we'd probably get a high pitch at some time. I'm guessing. But in case, there we have the clicking. So normally, I've been uh, just making uh, basically the same circuits, but without the amplifying transistor, which I did need. I didn't just add it as a demonstration. Maybe you can get away without the transistor if you wire it properly, but I haven't found that so far. But in any case, there's the LED that I usually do, the uh, flashing LED. And there you can see it's flashing so fast, even at a not terribly bright light that you uh, just looks like it's steadily on which sounds kind of like a tone if it's going fast enough with a speaker or buzzer so now we're gonna build this up step by step to look at what each part is doing so we have the physical component right there there's a, a little divot on top I think it has both uh, the divot and the uh, little circle there I could be wrong but in any case you can always tell the top by one or two of those. Pin number eight goes to the positive side of the power supply. Pin number one up there, the uh, top left pin, goes to the negative side of the power supply. The reset pin, we're holding that high right now. It's waiting for a low signal, and I accidentally miswired this. I put it directly to ground, which kept it reset. So I had some trouble uh, figuring out what uh, was going on. And uh, so in any case, once I realized I need to put that to the positive rail, it worked just fine. So, uh, if you're not looking at a schematic or something, it's easy to uh, miswire things like that. But uh, in any case, I got a reminder that goes to the positive side of the power supply or your circuit won't work. The uh, trigger and threshold pin, you can see a jumper right there, pin two to pin six, they both monitor the voltage of a capacitor in this point and determine the output. So, one third, power supply voltage, the trigger jumps into action. Two thirds, the threshold pin jumps into uh, action where they change the state of the output. And so that is why we have that jumper there. And so now I'm also gonna take the control pin since I had stability problems, which uh, I think the transistor fixed it, but I don't know for sure. But uh, any case, just in case, usually to help solve stability problems, there's a 10 nanofarad, I forgot to write 5 there, uh, microfarad, uh, 10 nanofarad uh, capacitor, I mean, that goes from pin 5 to the negative rail. So this makes it kind of awkward, I'm going to kind of bend it down a little bit to uh, put the uh, capacitor on the board, but it may help with stability problems, may not, but uh, you almost always see it on schematics, and it's probably a good idea to put it there. I just kind of omit it a lot of times because it makes it a little harder to see the uh, important circuitry. And now we come to the timing. So we depend on the capacitor charging to two thirds of the power supply voltage and discharging to one third of the power supply voltage. So the power comes from the uh, positive side of the power supply. And then we got negative over there on the other side of the capacitor. So this will connect directly to ground uh, part of the time. So we wanna make sure we have a high enough value resistor to handle a steady 5 volts, which is why I have 220 ohms right there. The next uh, resistor, so pin 7 to pin 6, is our light dependent resistor, which again, its value and resistance changes based on how much light is falling on it right there. And then we come to our capacitor, so it'll charge through two resistors, and then when it gets to two thirds, discharge through pin 7. Any current that gets through the 220 ohm resistor will go directly to ground right there. And uh, so let's try not to uh, touch the uh, other capacitor. 
and uh, we can kind of fit it right there we don't want to touch that resistor there either so that side's more uh, negative now when it comes to the load I shot this scene earlier and I put the speaker directly to the uh, output and then that's why I have this jumper there to go to ground I probably should have lowered the uh, current from 200 milliamps there because I believe I fried a 555 timer and then I was frying uh, capacitors it looks like after that somehow so I don't know how that all went on I might do a video where we look at those components next but uh, I'm not gonna play around this time I'm just gonna go right to the transistor and uh, so in any case we're gonna take a 4.7 kilo ohm resistor and the exact value does not matter but I want to prevent the transistor from saturating save us a little bit of uh, power so it's gonna turn on pretty well uh, but this is a high demand load for this setup right now and so the transistor just won't turn on fully it'll limit current a little bit and uh, so this is a 2N2222 and the pin layout if it starts with 2N and uh, no P's or anything before it but if it actually starts with 2 and N I found the pin layout if it's a bipolar junction transistor is always emitter to the left base to the middle and collector to the right right there so if we swivel it this way now collector is uh, higher up base in the middle and emitter is down low a little bit let's uh, zoom back and we can kind of squish this uh, together and uh, I'll put it close to the resistor right there just to make it easier to uh, space the uh, speaker and so uh, the reason why I'm using a long jumper is because I can't put this jumper directly there and so if I didn't have these uh, long wire jumpers I would have had to finagle something a little bit better but in case we're gonna put the negative side of the speaker looks like I bent uh, the wires a little bit to the collector the top pin there I know you can't see it I have a hard time seeing what's going on myself so in case fortunately it's not going into another spot there we go so we got the dot hopefully it's on there so this one there's two dots in between and then we go up there so that should be the positive side there and so we got our connection there that's uh, the top of the speaker positive side to uh, the positive side of the power supply and then to the collector of the transistor right there now we have to make our connection to ground on the other side and the power supply is off right now so we're not getting any clicking or anything right now and there we are we're all finished hopefully this is all wired up correctly and everything we'll zoom back and there you can hear the uh, rapid clicking and uh, slower clicking right there and of course we can shine the light on there so looks like every component I have on the board right now is okay because apparently I fried uh, quite a few earlier and uh, so looks like uh, at first it was the buzzer that fried a 555 timer but then that 555 timer uh, fried a capacitor somehow I don't know exactly how I was worried it was a light dependent resistor but uh, this is the same one so it's uh, working fine and uh, when I tested the other capacitors their capacitance was in the nanofarad range and I tried another 555 timer and then the other one and it seemed to fry the capacitor and then uh, uh, problem so I think I may have fried five, uh, three 555 timers and three or four uh, capacitors so uh, probably best off I should have limited the uh, current uh, more to uh, begin with to end that chain of events but in any case it's probably best just get the uh, 555 timer just having to provide a weak signal to a transistor letting it do uh, the rest and you're you're probably uh, pretty close to guaranteed not to fry anything under that circumstances especially if the power supply is limited to 200 uh, milliamps the 2N2222 can handle uh, about 600 uh, milliamps of current intermittently which is what this is doing so in any case uh, that's it we 
threw together a bunch of elements of earlier videos. We did the 555 timer. We did, uh, I think, one video of the transistor providing more power than the output can provide. The output just controls the 555 timer. And we did uh, the timing uh, circuits plus light dependent in a few other videos. So uh, that's all more complex circuits are, are just a bunch of fragments thrown together. And so the uh, passive buzzer, it's a, uh, I've had them for a long time, but I haven't really done any circuits, like three or four total with them. And so I learned a lot more uh, using it in this circuit here. And uh, so there was uh, some challenges. It didn't take too long to figure them out though. So as you learn each element, adding a new one might make things a little confusing for a little bit, but you'll probably be able to figure it out pretty uh, quickly once you have a basic understanding of electronics. So in any case, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.